Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Deepika. I'm at University Dubai at present. Coffee with CEO with Mr. Ravi Singh. Uh, earlier, we have had our Coffee with CEO in November for, uh, with Mr. Rohit Jarkaran, and we continue our journey with Mr. Ravi Singh. Uh, this is a very great opportunity for all our budding entrepreneurs, and hope you have a great day. Thank you, and thank you for welcoming me here. So I think we'll just start the process. Uh, I know that you guys have not been briefed and you don't know who I am and what I do. Uh, so what I will do is I'll reverse that and ask you guys what you're doing here first and then I, that will lead uh, me to tell you guys what I do, yeah? So do you want to um, yeah, okay, start? So I'm in my semester five right. for BBA in, in charts and banking. Okay. Um, but I'm more interested right now towards more business aspect of the okay. banking and insurance sector. Right. So that's why I'm... Brilliant. Finance then, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You Hi, my name is Priyanka yeah. and I'm starting in semester five of right. insurance and banking. Right. Doing insurance and banking but want to open up a business. So looking forward uh, to that. There you go. Great. I'll tell you good stories. <laughs> I'm Gaurav here uh, uh, from BBS Fifth Semester. Right. Doing finance. Right. Finance as well, huh? I'm uh, Seth, yeah. I'm from semester one BBA. Right. So, and I want to find out as to what drove you, what was your motivation to drive to open this business? Right, good question, I'll tell you about that. Uh, my name is Yogesh, I'm a BTEC computer science student. Right. I'm a, I'm a final year now. Yeah. Right, I'm um, getting out of the technical field and into the business area. All right. I do have a few ideas, start a business to integrate it with business process. Right. right. And target the people who are yeah. not getting the technology that they're supposed to. Right. So that's where I want to focus my business on. Okay. Brilliant. Good afternoon. My name is Mahesh. I am in my final year of MBA. Right. Uh, specializing in public relations and event management. Well, there you go. Great. And hopefully, I want to open up an events company. Your own business as well. Yes. Right. And not pay for any concerts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Um, hello. My name is Farah Hesi. I am doing uh, BBA General Service right. for Five. I'm interested in investing right. in all of Africa. Right. And I'm also interested in opening my own real estate in my country. In your country, which country are you from? Somalia. Somalia, right. I do work, a lot of work in Kenya oh. and Ethiopia. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go, great. Well, you guys are doing fantastically well. Now let me uh, let me begin, and I'm going to go to uh, your question to start off with. I think it's a very prominent and important question. Uh, a lot of people ask me the same question over and over again, saying, is running your own business an easy thing to do? And my response to that is, it is easy if you're mentally, psychologically, and emotionally prepared. Okay, If you're not mentally prepared to run your own business, you can't be running your own business because it is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard dedication. It's long hours. Uh, potentially, it could get very, very stressful. So you've got to build thick skin and know how to balance your work, life balance, and so forth, right? Um, the, uh, the, the, the key question at this present time uh, that we CEOs uh, constantly look into and ask uh, is how can we venture into other businesses? How can we diversify? How can we grow the businesses? That information can only come by you if you have a global exposure, okay? So even though you guys are doing your BBAs and your MBAs and so forth, so now I'm relating back uh, to your education, uh, it's very important for you to know what's happening around the world and where is the market segment that you can click into. Okay, so I'm going to give you some stats uh, as a very good example. Uh, five years ago, uh, an employee service or length of service with any organization was seven years. Okay, so seven years the employee would have stayed. Uh, as we speak right now, any employee in an organization is three years. By 2020, it's going to be 18 months. So can you see the, uh, the, how the numbers are now decreasing? Now, do you know why that is happening? Why would by 2020, you guys will last in the company for only 18 months? Maybe because the country wants people to diversify into various business fields? But that could be one reason, but not the primary reason. They don't like it. Uh, but why? They want to give them more jobs. No, I'm talking about global. I'm talking about global perspective. Okay, very good. So there's technology that is taking over. So there's three dimensions that is now in conflict. Technology, demographics, and globalization. Okay? So the world used to be this big, but now it's become this small. So what you guys need to start thinking about here when you're doing your studies and, 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 and having the aspire to to bring your own business uh, to some sort of a fruition in the next couple of years is 
how do you know what's happening in this world? Okay, those are the three things that's going to drive the business in the next 15 to maybe 20 years. Okay, so so how do I and why did I get into the business? Is because I had a dream that by 45 years of age, I want to hang up my corporate boots. I don't want to work for anybody. I don't want to make anybody rich anymore. That was my goal. But work for my own self and build my own brain. So that's when I started my company called Dolphin Consultancy because I know that any organization in the world right now, they need business strategy, and I'm the expert. They need transformation, okay? Going from old model to a new model of running a business. They need learning and uh, leadership development. They need all the leaders to be developed in the new contemporary way of thinking. Everybody needs coaching and a mentor, and they need to work on culture. Culture is one of the biggest things that's gonna last for 50 years. Can you give me some examples of companies that have very strong culture? You know, good. GM. GM, good. Which other companies? Apple. Apple, good. What other companies? Google. Google, anyone? Oracle. Oracle. You got the Microsofts, right? All these companies. I sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yes. I just wanted to know who all want to have coffee or tea. That's yes. <laughs> coffee with sugar with milk. Black. And just a work, just work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at all these companies now, you've got to start thinking, what are they doing differently? Okay, what are, and then when I'm talking to the CEOs and, and I'm doing my public speaking around the world, and I just want to open this session up so you guys can open your minds to where I'm coming from. If you look at, for example, what is, if I ask you the question now, what does Apple produce? Technology. Mm -hmm. You sure about that? It doesn't. You sure about that? Creativity. Innovation. That's the word. Innovation. Okay. Apple is an innovation game. It does not produce phones. What does Nike produce? Shoes. Sure. No, 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 not shoes. Sure. Sure. The brand. What, what, is brand what does it produce? Brand image. What does it produce? It, okay, that's the result. What does it produce? Fitness. Okay. Okay. Nike produces lifestyle. What does Rolex produce? Class. 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 Right? So when you're being your study and when you're going through this process of transformation, to me, I hire people in business that have got that level of intellectual ability to know Apple does not produce phones. But I need to be very innovative to work with a company. This makes any sense. So these are things that you guys need to start thinking about of why CEOs these days like myself. You know, we have, we have progressed, okay, organically developed, because we don't want to be the CEO of the 18th century or in the 1950s or 60s or 70s. The new generation like myself is a new way of thinking of how to run a company. So we want to make the companies very, very contemporary, very fun living. Does it make sense? So that's, uh, that's to answer your question, okay? Who else has got questions? You mentioned <laughs> globalization. Right. <coughs> but if you consider the current Global cinema, yeah, right. We have a shift towards uh, nationalism, mm -hmm. where you have America going, with make America great again. Right. You have the Catalonian right. protests, right? Even in China, mm -hmm. right, where people are going towards you want the Chinese to run mm -hmm. Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. How would you tackle that? Mm -hmm. It would be what in what aspect? For for example, products, right? Right. You have competition mm -hmm. now. Not in the same sense key, uh, even uh, people come from mm. uh, other places and sell right. products. You don't have, you have close off markets. Mm. Maybe not in reality, mm. but in the mindset. Mm. That's why uh, Donald Trump mm. reached this position. Right. Because he wanted America first. Right. American made products. Right. So what, what, what did you do? What did Donald Trump do? I'm using a bit of political example if I'm trying to bring into business. Right? It's a very good question. What has he done to create? that level of synergy where everybody now, every man and his dog knows who Donald Trump is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How did he create that? He said, I'm great and he became great. And branding, yeah. right? He branded himself as he's the greatest guy on earth, the only person on earth out of 7.5 billion people that can make America great again. Yeah. And he sent a signal to everybody. And people start believing him, right? He's used his business concept. He's a smart businessman. Yeah. So he's basically marketed him also, right? Personal branding. That's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So in business, again, going back to the business side of the question, so whatever you guys are studying, you need to understand two concepts. One is differentiation in finance. 
how can you be different than this person? How can you be, she's your competitor. How can you be different? What can you give me that she can't give me? That, that's, that, that's the whole key now, okay? So differentiation <coughs> and personal training, okay? So if you look at how uh, the business concept is not changing, a manager, a leader, let's say if I'm a leader, I have to learn, I have to understand marketing, I have to understand IT, give me two more. Finance and people, okay? And there's one more link to HR, ego, okay? These are the five dynamics that I need to know and I need to practice because I don't need a marketing manager. I should be able to guide my company the marketing push. I don't need an IT manager. Yes, I do an IT manager from a technological perspective, but the thinking has to come from me. HR thinking has to come from me. Finance thinking has to come from me. Okay? So these are the five positions is now merged into one role. So if you're a general manager or an MD or a CEO, right, or a director, okay, or if you're in charge of running company or on the board, you need to know these five concepts. Does it make sense? Yes. So these are things that are now changing and changing very, very fast. Now, talk about product differentiation, right? Any person can produce these phones. Any person can produce tables. Any, produce, any person can develop suits, right? The question that you got to ask yourself is, why do I buy a suit from this person and not the other one? It's because of the concept that we have with them. Value adding. What value have you added the supply chain? What value have you added on this person's suit? that this person cannot deliver. And if you look at it, I'm going to use some very basic concepts here to make you understand. <coughs> Uber, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uber owns no assets, right? Mm -hmm. No. How are they so successful? 200 over 200 million dollars. They're using other people's assets. They're using other people's assets. It's smart thinking, right? Yeah. Okay. So Uber is one example. Alibaba, you know even right? Mm -hmm. How the hell does it sell? It's a minimum. It's basically it's a minimum, right? I buy from her and I sell it to her. Okay? So I'm just sitting here, she buys, inventory goes from that person to that person, but I'm on the side, I'm just collecting money, right? I'm only transferring transaction. So how do they do that in the 21st century? Now, I'm going to give you a very good one uh, that I think blows people's minds away, particularly when you're doing an MBA and start thinking about doing Amazon.com. Amazon was a book seller, right? Publisher. It's selling tomatoes. Now, to a layman, to go from this to a diversified product up here is quite a huge transition, right? But why are they selling this now? And they're not interested in this. Why is this? Because of that online. There's more value. There's more value, right? I don't want to go shopping. Mm -hmm. I want to go on my computer and order tomatoes, and I want to order vegetables, and I want to order books, and I want to order shoes. And Amazon's going to deliver to me. Okay? So the concept of thinking has not changed, and it will continuously change. Value of money, right? Is it going up or going down? Yeah. 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 You have to work a lot more harder now to earn that dollar, right? Yeah. So if, if we're investing that money, what is not the ROI? ROI is now old term. What's the new term? ROE, return on equity. Okay, that's what you need to start measuring. Okay, so you can see how the concepts have changed. If you look at Hilton, Hilton Hotels, right? Yes. You all know Hilton, right? Yes. yes. What business are they in? Okay. No experiences. No. No. Real estate. Real estate. Okay, yeah, right. real estate. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you another one. McDonald's. Real estate, right? Yeah. So if you see how the concepts of business is now changing, and this is where people like myself we are always you have to think. And you always have to think five years, 10 years, 15 years ahead of the game. Otherwise, you just become redundant and you just become a particular element of a resource. You know, you're not getting any traction. Does it make any sense? So this, these are things that are now changing at a global level that every person needs to be aware of, okay? Demographic shift is the next one, right? If you look at what's happening around the world, okay? You guys, none of us are from here, right? But what the hell are we doing here? Does it make any sense? Yeah, we're from here. Why are we here? Making money. It could be making money. It could be lifestyle. It could be change of environment. Okay, but most of the young people want change of environment. Freedom, right? That's why they move. So when people are moving, okay, trends move. When trends move, money markets move. When money markets move, it creates more business. Right? That's how it works. So now you see the full cycle of what's happening. And 
So people like myself, I can, we have to monitor this 24-7 to see what's happening. Otherwise, if you miss the boat, you miss the train. You miss the concept, you miss the business opportunity. Okay? Yes. Then we talk about globalization. Airline industry, right? Airline industry. Coke, Pepsi, KFCs. Okay, these companies are now trying to reach Starbucks, right? Starbucks has now created a trend that coffee is what? What is coffee? Life. It's, what is it? Life. Life. It's about social. Yeah. It's about friendship. It's about getting together, having fun. That's what coffee does, right? But if anybody in Ethiopia knew, you know, a hundred years ago or sixty years ago, or eighty years ago, that that bean would create such a havoc in the world today, nobody knew. Most of you guys from India, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. How's coffee affecting India? Not it, is. Not it is. It is. People are saying they go grab a cup of coffee. Right, but he's breaking the cultural norms, right? Yes. Yeah. You're not supposed to leave home after six o'clock. Yes. yes. What are the young people doing now? They're leaving home after six o'clock. Okay. So now they're breaking the tradition, and this is a coffee bean. Trading wonders. Exactly. So, so if you want to go into business, to answer your your, your question as an example, uh, in in whatever fields that you want to go into, you have to really think. What is that market segment that's going to attract that position? Okay, that you can grab. Okay, and you've got to think always lateral, always lateral. Let me ask you another question. What time do you guys think? What time does your your brains work? Night. Night time goes by night time. What time? Uh, after nine. After nine. Okay. What about you guys? The whole time? No. There's certain times for the day. Late morning. 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 Oh, yeah, morning. Afternoon. Exactly. Evening. Yeah. Seven, you think? Exactly. Make you think? Exactly at seven. Okay. <laughs> right. And can you can you see concepts? Can you see ideas? Kind of. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to start training your brain. Mine works at two in the morning. Between two and four is my thinking time. Okay. So I can see concepts. I can see ideas, and so so I take that and strategize by the time it's six o'clock in the morning, and then I know what to do. Okay. So you guys, as part of your education, have to start doing the same. And that's how you become very good you know, entrepreneurs of the world, because you understand the concept of how the world works. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Right. Any other questions? Should be more questions. This is your time. Just a small question. Yeah. Like you said, just drive those positions. Yeah. In a country like UAE, mm -hmm. we, I think people sitting here, we have to open up a business. Why right. do you think there are any positions left in UAE for people like us? Right. I don't think there's anything left for us over here. Mm -hmm. After three years, we are going to go back to India. Do you think right. there are any positions for our people like us to be grabbed? I don't think okay. so. I, I, okay, I think there's, there's positions all around the world. What you need to do is to start thinking about, okay, this, at, this, at this level now, you guys are a bit too young, uh, but you need to still start thinking this way, is how do you create your brain position? How do you create yourself in the market that you're so demandful that people want to grab you? That's what you have to create. Okay. So basically, you should be like Trump, you should brand yourself. You have to brand yourself, yes. I have to brand myself every day. I'm branding myself now. I'm, I'm telling a story. I'm selling myself. Whereas you guys are going to go and tell somebody else, hey, I met this guy, crazy dude, you know, and he does X, Y, and Z. And somebody from there is going to call me and say, hey, can I, can I have some, yeah. some help in my business from you? I'm branding myself today. The university is going to be branding themselves by utilizing me. So it's called leveraging and branding. That's what you have to do. Yeah. Personal branding in the sense. Right. Personal branding and personal That's what it is. Yeah. Right. And this is the new trend now. Okay, you have to brand yourself. That's why you have all these social networks, right? Facebooks and LinkedIn and Snapchats and you know and all the rest of the why is for personal branding. That's what you have to do. Look at Facebook, right? Who makes Mark Zuckerman a lot of money? Us. We do. Who writes his contents? We, we, we do. We, Does he produce contents? No. no. Not at all. Yeah, just making money. Okay. So this is what you've got to think about is how, how do you do things in the modern, more contemporary way rather than traditional. Traditional doesn't work. It's facing out. Yeah? yeah. Great. So how many years have you guys got uh, to go before you finish? One semester. One semester? Five yeah. months. Five more months. Yeah. Same? Three. Same? Three years. Three years you've got. Oh, you yes. in. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You better have no friends then. Five months. Five months. Six, six months. Yes, so. Just one semester. 
one semester and then you get it back home? No, no, I'm going to continue. You're going to continue here? Okay. What further studies you mean? No, like gather as much as money and then go back to my country. Okay, and then, and then okay, good, good. But there's, a, there's also a positive, if you guys go back, you know, you, you, you've got this international exposure that you can take back, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can then do self-branding, then you become very well known. Yeah. But whatever you do, see, this is my, uh, you know, my, my best advice to you. Whatever you do, do it with your heart. Okay, if it doesn't come from here, don't do it. Okay? Whatever you do, do it from your heart. And whatever you do, you have to be very well disciplined. Okay, discipline is going to be the biggest thing that's going to make you or it's going to break you. Okay? If you're waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Whether it's hailing, raining, shining, storming, you wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay? Reading, you have to read. What do you read? Newspaper. Financial information. Financial information. Yes. You have to read. Okay? Because the world is now becoming so commercialized. If you miss that level, you're going to miss a big chance. You have to read. What else do you have to do? Social, social, social networking. You have to network. And the network that you do uh, is not just a casual catch up with friends. It's catching up with finance, catching up with some legal guys, catching up with some business guys, catching up with some marketing guys. You have to do network at that level. Engineering guys. Why? Because you want to know what's happening. Okay? Those three things combined will make you a personal brand and very successful in what you do. Yeah. Um, what can you say to the type of people who are not actually, they're actually against technology? So right. Because to be honest, I feel like humans and technology are like having a huge battlefield right, right. now. Right. So if Thank they you. don't want to move, like the middle ones move forward, yeah. what are the type of jobs that, that can, you know, set them comfort in this day? So it's a very difficult, it's a very interesting question. It's a very difficult question. I see this when I'm in, uh, in companies, uh, because I do a lot of management consultancy. Uh, uh, and I do, I do a lot of management consultancy. I try and, you know, uh, create a synergy for companies to grow. So I see a lot of these. And I do a lot of leadership development, and I see a lot of this as well. Okay, now let me let me go backtrack and talk about leadership development. You have baby boomers. You know baby boomers? When were they born? When were the baby boomers born? Do you think? So, yeah, six, late 60s, 70s, right? So they are now in business, right? So they become directors, general managers, MDs, and some of them are CEOs, right? So they are of that segment of the organization. Who's coming from within, underneath? Who's coming here? The millennials. The millennials, right? Yeah. Right. Then there's a gap. These guys were never brought up in a technological environment, right? Yeah. They never owned a phone when they were 14 years old. What about these guys here? You the day they were born, they were given an Apple phone, right? Yeah. Okay. So in an organization, what do you think is happening at this present time? Do you guess? Basically, the organization is being run by the generation which, was, which had been in the past, mm -hmm. where no phones were there given. Okay. Good, right. And the new generation is coming up, right. like where everyone's already advanced into advanced technology. Brilliant. Fine. I'm just going to come to him now. So, what, 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 what's the friction level? What is, what is, what is happening in the organization? Basically, Egos. there could be conflicts. Conflict. Conflicts? What else? There could be like a uh, tension between the two because oh, the young minds think differently and the right. old minds think differently. That's what I want to focus on. It is the mindset, right? So the traditional mindset and the modern mindset. This modern mindset is not fitting into here or the traditional mindset is refusing to let go and fit into here. So productivity suffers, product development suffers, innovation suffers, the way they think suffers. So now most of the companies they are on a crossroad. There is, there is the conjecture where there is friction. Okay, and these companies are not growing. So I go in and try and resolve the conflict to grow further. That's from an organizational perspective, right? From a personal perspective, those, these guys that are refusing to join this group here, the communication is a lot more difficult. Most importantly, if you look at jobs, right? Most jobs are going which way? Technological or against technology? Technology is going for technology, right? Doctors are now operating surgery, right? To machines. From machines, not using hands. If they can do it, McDonald's in the United States is producing a hamburger using robots. Right? So to answer your question, 
there will be huge friction. These persons or these people will be left behind. These persons will progress ahead. Because companies are not going to wait. Countries are not going to wait, right? Look at what's happening in Dubai um, in what, I think next year, the year after, the, the loops, the, the bullet. Yeah, the whole okay. thing. Yeah, have a look, right? 12 minutes from here to Abu Dhabi, right? So if you look at how fast countries are progressing, people and you guys and myself, we need to keep up the pace, otherwise we'll fall behind. Yeah. So just a question. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously the world is moving into right. advanced technology and everything, but what happens to the people who are not advanced technology? I mean, like for example, I open a company and I want people, I, I want technology and the people who are like still like who still want jobs, who need right. jobs. I want to create jobs for them as well. Right. So say that happens. So what would be the exact and then keep it balanced. Yeah, yeah. Like, they have a fine balance between those. Okay. I think I think you're gonna find uh, uh, that'll be a way get a challenge. I think you're gonna find a bit of a challenge. The technology now is so fine ingrained in the millennials that they can't live without life. I've got three children, right? My eldest is 20 years old and my youngest is 16. And they don't leave without a phone, right? Nowhere in the world. They will leave their wallet behind. They'll leave everything else behind. They'll forget everything else. But the one thing they don't forget is that phone. When they communicate with me and I'm their father, from one room to the next, how do you think they communicate? What's that? What's that? What's that? And I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just watching them from here. All they have to do is just walk through the door, and I'm here. Even if they scream, I can hear them, but they don't. They don't. Dad, what are you doing? Okay. Now, this is now. So think about when you're running a company, and you've got this generation that don't, have not merged into technology, and these guys, they want to do that. You're going to have a major friction. Now, on that point, what I say, if you want to be very successful in running a company, you have to hire people smarter than you. You have to hire people smarter than you. If the person is smarter than you, they'll pull you up. If the person is not as smart as you, they'll push you, they'll push you down. Okay? So now the whole concept of running business has changed. The contemporary world is very different. Reality is very different. If that answers your question. But then when you have, you said that you've built dead routines mm -hmm. on this, how do you resolve them? How do you resolve them? Education. <coughs> so you bring them, uh, like I had one organization very recently where the, there's about 18 uh, senior managers and none of them were on Facebook. Their children are, their wives are, their family members are, these guys are not on, even on Facebook. So what we did was we opened the account for them to try and show them the reason why they need to be on Facebook. Because education is slightly changing and most of the companies now do that on social media. Most companies do internal social media training okay. for people that, uh, that have left, left behind. Yeah. And there will be a certain percentage they don't want to go down that road. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Because they've already made their minds up. They're happy doing what they've done. But 99%, guess what? They're forward thinkers. Yeah? Sir, what, did you ever face this conflict in your company while, or by running your business organization? The, like, yeah, the, the generation, generation, yeah, yes. the technology, of course, yeah. And how do you solve this? Education. Education and storytelling. Okay, convincing people to come on board re with reason and why it is important for them to go down that road. Okay, they're not 100% merged, but at least they understand the concept. So education is, is the key. It wouldn't have been that easy to explain or convince no. them to come No, not hard. It's, 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 it's hard, it's not, uh, it's not difficult. It's not impossible. Yeah, it's it can be done, but it, it requires a lot of energy, a lot of patience. It's just like teaching you know, a two-year-old kid in a toilet train. That's what you're doing with the baby boomers. Yeah. Was there any example in Kenya? In Kenya? Okay. Kenya is a, uh, is, is a, is a very good market, uh, growing market. Uh, don't forget Kenya, a market like Kenya is in Ethiopia. Is, uh, they're not exposed to the elements as we are down here. Yeah. I, think, I think Dubai is, is very well advanced, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is a brilliant thing. So there, uh, again, uh, it's, uh, it's education, uh, but more than education, it's, it's like a toy. You know, you're giving somebody a brand new mobile phone and either they have never seen it or they don't know the app side of how it works. So they're very inquisitive. So it's easy to train them because they want to learn. But in certain parts of the world where it's already established and there's a generational gap, there's egos and resistance and refusal to change. You know, so, and you see this in companies as well. You talked about CEOs being an all-around player of knowing right. everything from all the departments mm -hmm. and knowing how to manage all of them. Mm -hmm. So as 
a staffing firm, even though I'm starting right. my base. Right. How do we gain those, uh, gain that knowledge over a period of, over a period of time? Of course, we can't learn it within a year. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. But what should we look? What should we be looking forward at? As okay. Even if it's on a tech, uh, as a tech company right. or, or a finance yeah. company, I would be concentrating on my core skills. Right. And I have to be good in this technology. Right. I would be good in this mm -hmm. type of uh, finance mm -hmm. and in the finance field. Mm -hmm. But other than that, how do we develop the other skill sets right. that are required for us to run the company, right. not just the business? Okay. You guys are all very intelligent, right? That's why you were here. Okay. You were intelligent, you're smart, you're good looking, you know, you've got a bright future ahead of you. What you need to do is to start networking. Okay. Networking at the highest level possible. So go to uh, you know, engineering conferences as an example. Go to leadership conferences as an example. Go to you know, hospitality conferences or business conferences. There you will meet all, all types of characters, all types of knowledge, all types of people. That will expose you to a different level of thinking. Right? Just like what you're doing right now. Right? I, I don't teach you, I don't work with you, you guys don't know me, but I'm bringing in things that you probably have heard about but never thought of. And now your, your light bulb moments are going in your mind saying, oh gee, if I did this and this is going to happen, right? So, like people like myself are all around the world. You just need to network. That's number one. Number two, if you get an opportunity, you have to travel. <laughs> travel is the best form of education. Why? Because you're exposed to other elements that you have never experienced, thought about, or seen. Okay? So you go to countries. Okay? And number three, as I said, you have to keep up with the news in terms of what is happening. The lot more reading you do, the lot more understanding you do. Than, and it's not just about picking a paper up and just reading. It's understanding the concept of why. Why is that happening in the world? If you can understand that concept of why is it happening, you'll be very intelligent and very smart. Okay? Those three things. So what are your personal like, uh, views on marketing? Marketing? Yeah, your personal views on that. Right. Marketing from the traditional model has changed. Okay. Advertising, if I take, take one example, is advertising on billboards and newspapers, all changed. It's moving very, very fast. Marketing now has become digital, right? Yes. That's marketing. So many companies now uh, are bringing, uh, and, I'll, and I'll use this term which I don't want you to forget and think about. It's about storytelling. Right? Marketing now is about storytelling. Storytelling about oasis. Why is this water one of the best waters in the world? And who does marketing for Oasis? I'm a truck driver. I'm the marketing agent of Oasis. She's answering the phone in the back office. She's the marketing agency of Oasis. She is taking customers' orders on the phone. She's the market. So marketing now has become so digital and so flexible and fluid. Every person sitting around the room, if we are representing this brand, we are all marketing agents. That's what marketing is now, not the traditional model anymore. Okay? And with marketing now, uh, and you've heard how you guys do marketing subjects, the four, yes. four P's? Yes. yes. What are the four P's? Yes. Uh, place, 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 price, and price, place, and promotion. promotion. So this product has to be appealing to a consumer now. Okay? Now, if you look at what was happening two years ago, the millennials were walking around with bottles of water, right? Why was that? Why was a millennial holding a bottle of water in their hand two years ago? Fitness? I want to be, I want to tell my friend I'm fit. I can climb buildings. I can jump buildings. I can skip, hop and jump and do whatever. I can do push-ups just by holding a bottle of water. I may be the total unfit guy in the world, but I'm telling my friend I'm very fit. Okay? That's my career. Somebody created that, okay? Not a company, somebody created it. And a person like me that told my friend, you need to drink water to be fit like me, that's marketing, okay? We just bought our coffee, right? Starbucks, that's marketing, okay? So the, the diversification of products, digital, is marketing. Price, what's happening with price? Basically, the price is being made as to what customer would want to buy. Right. Okay. So some people, if you look at Dubai, right? Yes. And I, and I use this example a lot. You guys go to Lulu's? Yes. yes. You go to Lulu's, right? Yes. Why is Lulu's so busy? Because they offer some of the comparative lower prices in other marketplaces. 
Okay. Same product, right? Yeah. Okay. Have you been to Spinney's? Yeah. Or you go to Waitrose? Yeah. There's difference, right? Yeah. So, price is now directly linked to something called prestigious, which is linked directly to luxury. So if I want to show my friends that I'm rich and you know I, I can't afford, where I'm gonna go and shop your trolls, trolls and spins, right? I can get the same thing in Lulus. Okay? So price is now become a commodity and it is lifestyle. So that's why uh, you know as, as a brand marketeer you have to think saying, okay, what do people want? People want water, right? How can I create a water brand? that it attracts the attention of the lower socioeconomic, the medium socioeconomic, and the higher, right? Boss water, right? Yeah. It's same water, right? Yeah. Branded, yeah. 20 times more. But people still buy it. Okay? Avian. 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 People still buy it, right? But it's not everybody that buys. Yeah. It only attracts certain clientele, right? So this, that's what marketing is all about. Okay. Now placement. Okay. You need selling proposition that they're coming by that. Sorry. You need selling selling proposition. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. You have to create the differentiation. Just like what we talked about. How do you create a difference? How do we create a difference? Okay. How does the university create a difference? Okay. That's what it is all about. It's all about branding. Everything is linked to branding and people. Two things it comes down to. Lots to think about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Lots to think about. So, so as, as you guys are going through this transition of learning and becoming a lot more educated in terms of what is happening around the world, you have to physically, emotionally, you have to expose yourself to the world environment and say, okay, what, what is happening in the world and where is this opportunity? You know, where is this opportunity? Like, I, I can you can't see from here. You know the power lines, yeah? Yes, yes. yes. If somebody engineering, it, can somebody develop something and app? or a tool to get rid of all the power lines in the world, that person will be a multi-billionaire overnight. If somebody can make Wi-Fi totally remote, where you don't need any connections from anywhere, that, you're going to be a multi-billionaire. If somebody can, you know, can get light bulbs to light without any transformers, you'll be a multi-billionaire. And that's where the world is going now, right? You heard about the building they're building from, uh, hanging from orbit? Yeah. It'll be built here, shipped to New York. So think about all these things that are coming now, okay? How often is a brand new laptop in the market? How often does it come out? Very few Six months? Six months? Three weeks. Three weeks? Twelve hours. Okay. Twelve, Twelve hours. hours. There's a brand new network in the market, right? A brand new technology in the market. So think about how fast things are moving. And if you don't move with the same speed, then you're going to fall behind. Because the new generation now that are being born, they are born with all this, right? They are adapting things very fast. Very fast. I don't with it. I've got nieces and nephews, you know, they can't even speak, they can't even crawl, and what are they doing? That's, that's what they're doing now. Okay. I bet yeah, they want this, right? And they don't even know what it is, but they know this, and they know this, and they know how to click it. Okay? I was back home in, in Sydney, I got a friend, a niece, you know, born, uh, just, just crawling now, and you know, she went to the TV, and what is she doing? Swiping. She's swiping the TV, swiping. you know? Swiping the TV. Now, nobody's taught, taught her that, but she was born with that uh, with the knowledge of thinking. So. So this is what's happening, guys. Okay, so as CEOs of companies, we have to be a lot more ahead of everybody else and, and constantly think. So 80% of my time is spent in my company thinking, what can I do differently? What is my USB? What is unique about me? Why should people call me? Why should I provide X, Y, and Z services? And there's another thing that you guys need to understand that the concept of running a business is, if I started producing water 20 years ago, I may not be selling the same water now. Does it make sense? I may drop the product. I may be something different. I may be selling shoes. I may be selling shirts. I may be selling makeup. Who knows? So business transforms, people transform, market transforms. But you need to be in it to win it. Yeah. So what was the toughest challenge you ever faced uh, in your business life? In the business life? Yeah, toughest challenge. Adapting from working as an employee of an organization 
to going to run your own business. So the adaptation and the mindset are two different things. And I'll tell you what. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Farah. If Farah is paying me a salary of, let's say, a thousand dollars a month. The accountability that I have towards Farah is four thousand dollars, right? If I make a mistake, there's a good chance, 99.9% of the time, Farah is not going to get rid of me. She may yell at me, she may scream at me, but she'll forgive me. But I know that I've got a thousand dollars in my bank account because she's paid. When you're running your own business, it's a reverse. Nobody pays me, right? Say so Farah is working for me, and she makes a big mistake. What happens to the thousand dollars? I've lost. Okay. To think and to change your mindset that everything you do starts with you and finishes with you is not an easy thing. Because I'm so used to for the last forty-four years being working for somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Taking directives from somebody. Uh, being a servant of somebody, but now when the when the whole thing turns and you become the owner of it, your perspectives change. So basically, you wouldn't be wrong to be selfish for your business. Right? No. Yeah. So you have to work out what makes you tick. You know, what decisions you make is going to impact people around you. Yeah. That's a hard thing. What other questions do you have? Being a 20 year old girl, you know we really have, I think, basic or minimal skills to open up a business. Right. And we've adapted pretty less skills like right. out there what people have. Right. Do you think skills what we have will help us to even open up a business or run a business at this age? You know when I was 25 years old and uh, I always wanted to be, by the way, what I'm doing now is not what I wanted to do. I went to university to become a surgeon. That's what I went to university for. Okay. I diversified very quickly. You know why? Because there was a need to do that. And number two, I uh, got exposed to something called money markets. Okay, When there's an availability of resources and I can do this and make money, why the hell do I have to go and spend 14 years studying? Does it make any sense? Yeah. That's hit my mind. So when I grabbed this opportunity and, uh, and I started making money at an early age of 17 years old, when I was 17, and when I became, when I crossed 25, I was thinking, sitting at home thinking, all these businesses in the world, they would have started somehow. But now I've, I've got no opportunity because everybody is doing what I want to do. At that time I was very naive, maybe a bit silly, because I was not thinking global and bigger picture. Now I look back at myself, I could have been very, very rich when I was 14 years old. So this is what life teaches you, right? When you're at that age, you think you can't do it. When you pass that age and when you look back, you say, you know what? I could have done that. I could have been the Uber. I could have been Alibaba. I could have been Google. Airbnb. I could have been Airbnb. But at that time, I was not thinking straight. So to answer your question, even if you're 20 years of age, there's opportunities around you. All you need to do is surround yourself with the right people. Don't surround yourself with negative people. Number one rule. Number two rule is surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Don't surround yourself with people that think exactly the same as you. Because otherwise, what's going to happen? You're going to go at the same rate. You're not going to go up. Yeah. But if you surround yourself with people that are negative, what happens? Yeah. They drop you down. So those are the two life skills that I learned when I was 25 years of age. I had to, I had to not drop people. But I had to change my perspective of who I was dealing with and who was going to be with my in my circle. Okay, so you can do that now. Uh, yeah. If we go for a startup, yeah, how we do the in the, like uh, funding and stuff? Right, that's always the question. Right, but do you need funding in all businesses? Most of them. Most, you mostly need funds for business. Depending on what it is, right? Yes. Yeah. You need ideas. Okay, you need resources, right? Uh, sometimes you can start a business with a concept and attract the right resources. And sometimes you can have the right resources, but you don't have the right idea and you can attract. So what you need to do is to work out where do you sit in that sphere. Do you have the resource or do you have the idea? If you've got the idea, 
Think about this. Let, let, let's, let's think about this. Who's the richest guy in the world today? Bill Gates. How did he start? Complete idea, right? Idea, right? He didn't have any money. Idea. Richard Branson. How did he start? An idea, right? Okay. So yes, you need both. You do need both. Some point in life, you will need both, but you need to have one to get it going. Okay. And you need storytelling. You need to tell your stories of why you are great, why you are good. What can you do for society? Very, very important. Okay. That leads me to the next point, which I don't want you to do. I want you to take this away uh, and, and think about this. There's four elements that's going to make businesses tick and it's going to make you tick. One is if you become very people-oriented. You have to be people drivers. Because people now is commodity, right? If people are right, they will bring the sales. Right? If they bring the sales, what happens? You make the revenue or you make the profit. Right? Now, here's where you need to stop and think. If you are very greedy, if you are very selfish, if everything is about you, you're going to fail. You have to give the last element the most credibility, and that's community enhancement. Whatever you make, give some for yourself to make yourself happy. The rest, what do you do? Yeah. Give it away. Because if you do that, you've created a brand for yourself. And making people recognize you. Exactly. You're going to grow. And you're going to grow organically, automatically. You don't have to do anything else. The general public will help you move to the next level. Think about companies in your own countries that are doing that. Can you name one in, in, in India? Yeah. Relax. Okay. Uh, Tata. Tata. Which Tata. one? Tata. Tata, right? They have this where they don't where yeah. they donate money like almost every mm -hmm. month, and because of that, like people yeah. are always thinking that why not buy from Tata? Because right. At the end, there at the end of the day, their money is going towards donation indirectly. So okay. why not? So just take Tata as an example, right? And uh, and Tata is investing a lot of money in community. They are working towards not this generation, next. towards the next, next generation. generation. Now, to me, that's strategic thinking, which means I have now established a brand that's going to last for another 100 years. Does it make sense? That's what you've got to think about. So create something that you think is going to be for the next generation. It's going to be for the future. But it, it also has to satisfy you today. But it's going to create something, a momentum that's going to change the world. That's how you change the world. That's what it is. Life is very, very simple. Okay? Keep it that way. Okay, don't complicate it. Keep it that way, but you have to be forward thinkers and, be, and keep developing. Now, a lot of people ask me this question, saying, ah, well, you know, I've done my BBA, and I think that's the end of it, I don't want to study anymore. It's not about studying, what is it about? Knowledge. knowledge is power. You have to keep up with knowledge. Okay? I have hired thousands and thousands of managers around the world for my businesses. Thousands of managers. From PhD students to MBA students to BBA, you name it, I've hired. But there's one constant. I'd rather hire somebody that has got this practical, intellectual ability to do things than hire a PhD student. Does it make sense? Yes. And this is what I was talking to uh, Dr. Kavita oh, this morning, or this evening, this afternoon rather, that the universities have to change their concept of how they impart education. Education is fantastic, I'm all for it, I've taught universities all my life, right? But, there's no point in getting a piece of paper and you don't know how to, how, how to apply the skills at work. That's what employees want. So for you guys to think about how are you going to build your career, if this is great facility, great university, great education, but think about how you're going to apply the knowledge. That's what people want. What is this water going to give me? That's what I want. What is the coffee going to give me? That's what I want. It's value added. Okay? And that's called CSD, creating shared value. Right? Cool? Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So now I've just pretty much told you guys or, or shared with you my personal experiences. Okay? Of how to become good at what you do. And you have to be good. There's no choice, right? You have to be the best. You have to be the best. What other questions do you have? You entered the service market, right? right. Yeah, to my, my mm -hmm. right. And when you started, it was you. Yeah. Maybe a couple of friends or a couple of friends. 
how did you sell yourself? How did I sell myself? Exactly. How okay. many people know that okay, you have good ideas, you can uh, make better money or business? Okay. There, there's a couple of ways to sell. Okay. You, you can go down the digi digital route and you know, can do fancy videos and things like that and get people to know you from that angle. My angle is totally different. Uh, how I sold the idea to employers or to clients was So I'll come in your organization, you don't have to pay me, but I will show you how to increase your profitability or your sales position or your company position by 2%, by 5%, by 10% and so forth. And then if you think that this is going to be a worthwhile journey, you can hire me as a consultant. So basically, yeah. have the 100% if you do, you have to show them 25% so right. that they can hire you, pay exactly. you for 75%. Yeah. Yeah. What's the challenge yeah. between you and the person? So what's the challenges? No, I'm saying it was a challenge between you and him. Yes. Because I want to be better than McKenzie's. But I know how to do things better than them. Okay? But so, so business is not always about making money. Does it make sense? Yes, you need to make money. Because everyone needs to make money to survive, right? It's just like food, you need to eat. But it's not always about that. It's about what can you do for her that she can attract my attention and tell everybody else. So not only have got one client, I've now got 10 clients all of a sudden just by telling somebody a story. Okay, so mine is storytelling and challenging the person to think differently. And I can make you think differently. Just like what I've done now. Okay. As a marketing in the school stuff, mm. content marketing because of big, better, bigger value in right. content mm. marketing. Mm. Right. How do you capture your attention? Sorry? Our generation is pretty ADHD. Mm. Right? 10, 30 videos, mm. photos, look at it, right. go. Right. How do you go for something a little bit more? How do you make, how do you make them? I think there was a big uh, example, I think, which was, which was it? Um, Blade Runner 2020. Right. 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 It was a really long movie mm. with a lot of concepts, which mm. bombed in the mm. box office. Right. Purely for the fact that it was way too long. Right. right. So how do you capture, how do you say that, hey, listen, I got something. Yeah. Either 10 seconds, he's teaser. Right. But then I want you to sit for the entire thing. Right. That all depends on the very humanistic time approach. You guys, when you guys were young, did you go to your grandparents' place? Yes. yes. Right, you went, right? Your grandmother, your grandfather, everybody did, right? I did. What did they, what did they say to you? What, what, how did they t talk to you? Did you tell them what they used to do they have when they were When they were young children, children right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I walked, you know, 20 kilometers with a bucket empty to fetch the water from the water. Well, I came back and I met, you know, uh, tigers and lions and blah, blah, blah. And they, they expressed the story from them and from the guts, right? Yeah. And they made it so real that you said, and think, wow, and then you started asking a lot of questions. What I'm doing right now, and what you just said, is exactly the same. You have to tell a story in such a way that the persons listening to the story, they get emotionally, psychologically attached to the story, okay? And they want to know. When a new movie comes out, why do you guys not watch it? It's a story. It's a story again, right? Somebody's story is a fantastic movie. And what is that somebody? Digital marketing. Right? Coke. Have all of you tried Coke? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why did you drink it? Trendy. Okay, but it's not good for you, right? No. Okay. But you still drink it, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because we've seen the market that people drink it. We you should drink Coke. I'm going to drink Coke, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. That's what it is. Okay, so in business, you have to be the Cokes of the world. You have to be the movie star. Okay? And you have to tell a story. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And if you can do that, you're going to be good. Uh, the audio, uh, the storytelling, yeah. which audiences do we, do we have to present it? In the networking events or something like that? Everywhere. 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 Because you have to do, you have to build four things. Okay. One, you have to have a vision. Have you guys got a vision? Yes. Yeah. Very clear? Yes. Sharp? Yeah. Written? Exactly. Is it written? No. Okay. I mean, by time it will, yeah. When you go home tonight, you need to write your vision and your goals and you need to stick it in three places. One is your fridge door. Where you open the fridge every day, it has to be there. 
Number two is going to be on your toilet door. Okay. Which you go there every day, right? Yeah. Back of the door. Your wallet. You can put it in your wallet, or you can put it in your bedroom and the ceiling. Because when you go to bed, where do you, where do you sleep? Up. Uh -huh. You go to up, right? Those three things, those three places are very, very important. If you, if you write the goals, and you stick it somewhere, and you see it three times a day, that is going to happen by itself. If it doesn't happen, Farah's going to help me make it happen, because she's also seen it. Is it making sense? Very important. That's number one. Number two, you have to be in a position to influence others to think like you. Okay? Because if you can start influencing people to think like you, you're going to have people that are going to help you achieve your goals. Number three, you have to be credible. Don't do the wrong thing. Don't do the wrong thing. Yeah, it may sometimes sound stupid and silly. You may want to do crazy things. But do the right thing. You need to be the role model. You want people to look up to you. OK? You can achieve your goal. Number four is the most important. You have your followers. People that want to be your friend. OK? It has to be reverse. People that are chasing you, they want to be your friend. Then you can sell any products you want. Because if I've got 10 friends, and I just say to you guys, I just bought this water for two terms, guess what's going to happen? You all want it? Yeah, they're going to run me two, 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 give me more water. <coughs> That's how it says. That's it. That's your need. That's the four things you need. So the first step is actually law of attraction. So who taught you that? Who taught me that? Mm. By experience, by understanding by studying people and humans and behaviors, by studying organizations, you know, and I'm a very inquisitive guy. You know, when I go to countries, I go to places where people don't want to go. When I go to India, I go to Dharavi, right? Because they see a lot. When I go to Kenya, I go to, you know, the, lo the, the lowest socioeconomic areas, which you see a lot. I walk the streets, I talk to people, I try their food. I'm very inquisitive because that gives me energy, it gives me positive, you know, an, an attitude about life. It makes me think, saying, I'm so fortunate I'm sitting in a beautiful office and there's somebody in this world today, in the next 10 seconds, going to die because of the heat. They were no clothes on the back. Does it make sense? So it makes me think. And say, so why that and why this? And you guys need to be in the same position. So that's where I get my inspiration from, dealing with people and talking. you do, I mean, uh, uh, but then you've got to see, if mentally you're prepared, then nothing stops you. You can, you can take anything. But mentally, if you're not prepared, that's when you'll feel that you're under pressure, and you're under stress, and, you know, things are going wrong, and you know, it makes you think differently. See, I'm, I, by nature, and I'm a very positive guy. You know, negative feelings don't affect me at all. And I can tell just by being in the room who's negative and who's positive straight away. You know, because you train your mind to think like that. Does it make sense? So I already pre-prepare myself saying, okay, if that person is negative, I know how to tackle that and bring towards me some nice positive energy. He or she still may be in the room, but I'm still surrounded by positive energy. So you guys need to do, start doing exactly the same. And this all comes with experience. You don't learn it. Uh, nobody can teach you this. It all comes with experience. Um, no protection can be done by reading also. It can be done by reading. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of readings out there, there's a lot of videos out there. But again, to be honest with you, there's a lot of material out there. The question is, what do you take in and what do you apply? That's what the question is. Yeah. People say criticism makes you or breaks you. Right. What is your personal opinion on that? It makes me. You know what? I don't work with people that say, yes sir, I like your shirt, I like what you do, I don't know. I don't accept. I want people to tell me what I've done right, what I've done wrong. If somebody tells me, and this is, this is a very good question, I take 30 minutes out every day, every day, 30 minutes out, and I sit back whether I'm home, whether I'm in the office, whether I'm in the airplane, I sit back and I say, what did I do right today? What did I do wrong today? And what should I have not done today? Who did I hurt? I go through all of that every day. If I have done a mistake unknowingly, but I know that person got hurt, 
when I reach home, I pick the phone up and I ring that person and I apologize. That's my way of working. Okay? And that gives me discipline, that gives me self satisfaction that I've done the right thing. Does it make sense? Yes. I do that every day. So you need to be in the same position. You need to reflect, learn, and progress. Because if you don't do that, you always go backwards. You never progress your work. And when we start up, when we go for a startup, right. do, uh, do we have to do a planning of exit strategy? Exit. Yes. Exit strategy? Yes. With the identification. Right. right. Yes, you have to. You know why? Because if you go, uh, if you do go any startup and you don't know when you're going to get out, your planning will be fractured. Because you can't do anything that you want to do for life. Okay, so there needs to be a, a, an exit strategy, but you also have to be very realistic. It could be a two years, could be three, but generally it is fine. You have to have a five year exit strategy. And then after that, if you don't exit, you renew it. But you have to go And planning, everything you do, plan properly. Anything, whether you're doing assignments or whatever it is, plan. That's, that's key. You said no, plan to progress. Right. Uh, other than the business perspective, and so from the personal perspective, right. How do you measure yourself if you keep improving? And, uh, do you have a certain uh, journal or something, or do you keep notes on something that you're doing? Or is, uh, or is it that is you have the disciplined mindset to do it after all these years? Yeah, I've got a disciplined mindset. Discipline is something that comes to the next um, uh, What do we call it is, um, uh, it's, you know, your unique concept where you have built that into yourself, so it automatically happens. <laughs> But what I also do is when I go to networking sessions and when I'm talking to people like yourselves, and today is probably not one of those networking, it's more just a general discussion, but I want to learn from you. Does it make sense? So if you say something that I have never thought about, I make a note. I only make a note on my phone. And then when I go home, or when I have about half an hour, 45 minutes, I Google and I research. Okay, and if I, if I read and don't understand the concept, what I do then is, if I've got the person's contact, I call them. Hey, can you catch up for a coffee with me? Because I want to know more about what you said the other day. So that's how I keep myself ahead. And the other thing is that I do, the third element is, uh, the types of questions that people ask me, I know. Like, for example, if you guys were business owners today, you would be my client. Because I know the gaps. Does it make any sense? <laughs> okay. So I'll be selling you my products straight away. Okay. So what I try to do is try and know where the gaps are and how far am I sitting ahead or below the gaps. Okay. So, uh, does network marketing help? Network marketing yeah. uh, for my business? Yes, because all the or ninety percent of my business comes from uh, networking and recommendations. I don't. Uh, I don't. You don't cold calls? No, I, I don't. I hate it, and I don't. I'll never do it. No. But you never did it. Uh, cold calls. No. But you've never done it? No. no. Then how do you start with? How do you it's storytelling and network. What can I do for you? Rather than make, picking up a phone up and ringing him, but I don't know who he is. Yeah? So what happens is otherwise I'll destroy my brain. Because I'm basically you know, trying to sell a product that you don't know about. Does it make sense? And it's very annoying. He doesn't want to hear from me. He doesn't know me. But if he knew me and bought a for a coffee and we had a chat a couple of times and I shared what I did and showed him all this stuff, he'll be a lot more interested because he has now built a personal relationship with me. Yeah? So that's what you have to be careful with business. Networking is what business is. Like most of the guys if you look at, you know, Warren Buffett's and you know, all these guys, where do they, where do they uh, tie up a deal? Where? Where does the deal occur? In the bar. In a bar? It's not one place, you're right. Where else? It can happen basically almost anywhere. Something yeah, happening. true. But there's certain areas they hang out, right? Golf years. Golf. You guys are so wrong. That's where they tie the deals. I don't want to sit in a fancy office with Warren Buffett and tie a deal in the office like this. He'll hate it. He won't be here. He won't even turn up. But if I invited him for golf, what do you, what do you think he's going to do? Of course. And if I invited him for a drink, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to walk up. That's where the deals happen. So you guys need to start thinking about where does the financial deals happen? Yeah? Like most of my business deals, happens where? You won't believe this. Coffee shops. Coffee shops. In Starbucks. That's where my deals happen, because that's where people want to meet. So the whole, the idea of running a business, it's not four walls anymore. And it's very flexible thinking. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. Did it help you guys think? Yes. Yeah. 
So uh, please, when, you, when you're doing your studies, don't just concentrate on what's written in the textbook. Because what's written in the textbook was written by somebody else a long, long time ago. Okay? And when you read the page, yes, it probably makes sense. But the question is, how do you take that and apply? Because textbook and reality are two different things. And how do I know? Because I've been on both extremes and in the middle. I taught university, I've run companies, worked for companies, grown from a 14-year-old to whatever it is through the ranks, and I've used both types of materials to create successful great places or workplaces and run my own business. And we take you to the no longer expert of that, right? As a consultant, uh, do you recommend Bitcoins or no? Bitcoins? Yes. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> What, it's million dollar what is it sitting now? 16,000 is rich? 60,000. 62.173. 62.173. That's where it is now? Yes. Wow. I don't know what to answer you, you know, but, but to give you an answer, my wife said to me, when it was 372 or yes. $78, she's rather, you, you should buy it, you know? And, uh, uh, and I said to her, yeah, I'll, I'll think about it, you know? And I'll probably, we'll probably do it in the next couple of weeks. And what happens in the next couple of weeks? It's shot up. Shot up to about 2,000 odd. Then went to 5,000. Then it went to 6,000. Then it went to 8,000. Now it's sitting on 16 something thousand, right? Yeah. It's going to go, uh, I think it, it's, well, see, there, there's a couple of things here now. China banned it, right? Yeah. Yeah? They're using, they're making it their own Bitcoin. Own Bitcoins, right? And now the United States is adding that as a currency, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, big old, a biggest change. Uh, I read somewhere the other day, South Korea is pumping a lot of money in Bitcoins. Yes. So that's going to float the, uh, the, the value of The biggest question is affordability. Can you afford? Nobody can afford, right? You've lost it. So now who can afford it? Okay, it goes back to these two girls, right? The rich becomes richer. Because they are prepared to take the risk because they have got the resources that can fund it. But when the opportunity was there for me to do it, what was I thinking? You lost. I lost it because should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I do that or go and buy food for the table type thing? Does it make sense? Yeah. So I was very risk conscious. And I didn't want to take that risk. And I lost. Now it's sitting at this level, the guy that has got the money is going to take it to the left. He's going to make money. So yeah, so that's what's going to happen. Cryptocurrency, yeah? It's another big trend. Yeah. Big, big trend. So there you go. So social media, demographics, and globalization. Three things, or IT, demographic, globalization, that's going to change the way we do things. Yeah. Cool? cool. Yeah. Any final rounds of questions before we finish? I think we should. Yeah. Before we finish, we should know. You say that you're good in reading. Right. Can you read us? Read? Yeah, whether you're negative or positive. You can't do that. Otherwise, you're going to beat me up. No. <laughs> <I can't stay. laughs> the room is closed. <laughs> but you can ask your friends. You can ask your friends. See, if you sitting with two people, they'll tell you. Straight away. Strangers. Yeah. Ask them. What type of energy do I, do I send? What type of signals do I send? Don't be afraid to ask questions, okay? Always the why question. Ask why, 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 why. That's how you learn. Cool? Yes. Well, thank you very much for having me. I hope it was useful. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and uh, hope to see you guys soon as well, again. Great. Absolutely. Okay, why not? Now, I've got some books. Uh, okay. There's some, uh, some good, uh, good stories here uh, that uh, you'll do. Oh, we'll just pass it on. Just pass it on. Pass it on. Uh, this is my life uh, in a very simplistic way. Uh, that I've talked about how I started in business and how the dreams came to my mind, um, you know, how I conceptualized the dream uh, to make it a reality. So you write books? I also write books. This is my first book, by the way. The second book is coming out. Uh, and, and this is just to, this was on one night, you know, I mean, I'm sitting and I'm saying, okay, well, how can I tell my story uh, that makes sense yeah, to people? Okay, and hopefully this is going to be something big in the future in the next 10, 20 years. That I want to create. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so you can, you can have a read of that. Yeah? yeah. All right? Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, it was nice meeting you guys. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lose your dream 
and don't lose your future. Okay? You need to be very focused and very disciplined. Yeah? All right. Thank you. After you, after you, yeah. you guys go on. You have to show me how to, how to go from here. Yes, I was enjoying the session. Oh, oh you too. You watched it here. You were watching everything. Thank you very much. Oh, we see enjoying the session. We were responding with the very glad that we were able to that. I hope it was useful. Here. Come from you. So Maktoum was the architect for the entire room. Oh, yes, he was. <laughs> oh, was. Yeah. Small. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Okay. Let's join with everyone. Yes, we don't have... Would you like to have a little bit of a picture? Take out a little bit. Maktoum, I didn't realize I'm a one book short. Mm -hmm. but, okay.